Scorpio 20. Woman, drawing two dark curtains aside. This is a symbol of, of looking deeper into our sense of what we know without evidence to discover intuition. The, the, the two curtains that we're pulling aside, the, these represent the inclination we have towards polarizing things. It's either good or it's bad. It's either up or down. Yeah, this, this sense of duality that we live by, this is uh, drawn aside by the woman. Well, in fact, Rudyard, when he speaks of this degree, calls this the, the, the woman inside, the, the, the inner woman. Um, each of us, men and women, have a side to us which is not, um, it does not require explanation. It does not require persuasion. We, we just know. The intuition is a, a valid part of our, our thinking. It's a different kind of thinking. It, it's non-rational thinking, but it, it's an activity of the mind. Um, it's, it's the case that the mind makes up its system of, of comprehension and perception using both rational and non-rational sides. So we're looking here at what will happen when we give up our commitment to a rational way of seeing things. Men typically have this more than women, of course. And the, the way that men tend to think is, is like, okay, so you have a problem, we'll find a solution. Whereas a woman, oh, you've got a problem. Oh, oh dear, you know, I'm, I'm on your side, you know. So a, a woman will support another woman to find her own solution. And a man will offer a solution and be a little bit disappointed if, if you don't take that advice and sort things out. Um, so Scorpio 20 is saying, well, what happens if we put aside that attitude of duality? What do we see then? And what we see is, is not what we expect to see. It's, it's, we're moving into the realms of the unknown here, and it takes a certain amount of faith and courage to step into that realm of existence, which is not proved. It, it's, it's not explained even. It's your own personal mystery. Nobody else has had that perception, and, and you cannot communicate this perception totally and clearly to anyone else. It's absolutely your version of what life is that we, we, we can expect you to see when you go into the, the darkness that's beyond the two curtains. So certain realities are just not available to us if we approach them in a rational way. Uh, all of us are interested to some extent in astrology, and, and we must have come across people that just say, no, 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 astrology cannot exist, therefore it does not exist. Uh, it's, it's almost a waste of time talking to them to try and open them up. It's that attitude of, of bigotry, of making a decision before you've studied a matter that, that we're, we're exploring here. Um, when we go beyond that, that realm of the explicable into the areas of the unknown, when we move through that barrier of self, we find a new dimension to life. Now this, this is an event in, in life or, or a process that takes a while but is noticeable when it finishes. We know at some point that now we have faith. Now we trust our intuition, whereas before we did not, typically, not universal, but typically. We come to a point of understanding where actually, yes, I'm a person of faith. And making that level of, of understanding and committed, to be committed to that level of understanding, it's like opening a gate. Um, we, we move into a different way of, of life. We're in faith is the the deepest principle not measurement but faith we enter a a strange world in a sense it's strange because nobody else has been there it's our world the, these are not states which compare very closely to another person's we we can talk about it we can get a sense of similar experiences but 
not measurable. We, we cannot prove that my experience and your experience is the same. Um, and therefore we need some courage to enter this realm of a life of faith. Um, faith is beyond courage. You need courage when you have no faith. When you have faith, you trust. Well, what do we trust? Do we trust in God? Do we trust in life? Do we trust in ourselves? And I think the answer is we, we trust in the future. We trust that the future will be okay. That whatever we do, things will work out well, whatever we do. And if there's a situation in hand and then it looks as though that there's no way through here, everything looks bad, we, we can't cope, no predictable future here but disaster, that is evidence of the absence of faith. Nobody with faith would interpret a situation like that. Somebody of faith would say, oh, here's a pretty big grey cloud. Where's the silver lining here? And, and they start looking for it. And I, I remember the time when I changed from being somebody who was very analytical and questioning and doubtful. And I had an experience and I came through the other side and I affirmed faith. And I started to develop it and, and, and trust it and, and then notice that it works and trusted it more and so on. So the process of training yourself to use faith is not the same as deciding to have faith. They're two different things. So as, as my faith became more of a practice, more of a personal life quality, um, something really noticeable happened. My, my life became easier, smoother. I had less problems. I had, sorry, fewer problems. I had um, uh, a more comfortable ride. Life was actually more enjoyable and different, mysterious in some way. If, if you just can't cope with a situation and you say, oh, well, I'll leave it in God's hands, and you really do leave it in God's hands. You don't try and impose your own will upon that situation. Something you hadn't noticed before comes to your attention. You see a, a way through. And if you continue with your um, trusting in the faith, you move in that direction and you see something else. And you meet somebody and you have a bit of information or resource given to you. And little by little, step by step, you move towards uh, resolution. It's like we're trying to walk on water or something. And every time we make a step, a stone comes up that we can stand on. But we have to step not knowing that the stone is there. A bit like that. Now, of course, having separated these two dark curtains ignorance, fear, we move into a life of faith and joy. It's not the same as being reckless. It's not the same as being silly. It is to be balanced with reasonableness, common sense, a certain amount of caution sometimes. This world is a dangerous place. And even though with our faith we will find a way through, that way through is subject to our not being self-harming. And giving up on common sense is a form of self-harm. So if your sun or your moon or another planet is in this degree, this is Scorpio 20, um, what could we expect? Well, we expect you to be challenged to find a situation in your life where if you have faith, all is well. But if you do not have faith, all is not well. These are the kind of events that will come to you from time to time until you come to realise, yeah, that's actually how it is. And if it's your son, consciousness, you know this. If it's your moon, unconsciousness, you don't. You kind of stumble along trusting things, not quite knowing how it all works, but you've got this deeper sense of intuition. So the moon in this degree is somebody with an extraordinary level of intuition. The sun too, but the moon more so, I would say. And the other planets, um, 
in their own way. So if you have Jupiter at this degree, you'll sort of expand your life intuitively. You, you'll make a decision about what to do with your career or where to go on holiday or whatever, but you'll just do something spontaneously perhaps, and that will be a very expansive event in your life.